William Lawrence, professor of political science at the American University in Washington, discussed with VOA senior analyst Mohammed al Shinawi whether the convention has boosted Harris's stance as a qualified candidate able to win over American voters. It definitely has. She's getting the famous convention bump, which often occurs after conventions in American politics. And this one will probably be larger than the regular convention bumps, which will often add three to five points to someone's polling numbers. So today's day, day four, the concluding night and speeches will be tonight. She's going to emphasize the uh, three themes in her speech tonight. Number one, sort of telling her life story. Number two, contrasting herself with uh, Donald Trump. And number three, this whole theme of patriotism and freedom, which ironically, the Democrats have sort of appropriated from the Republicans because the Republicans used to talk about patriotism and freedom, and now they talk about despair and decline. And so it's funny watching the Democrats, how Republican at uh, the convention sounds. Um, it's a historic convention. She's the first candidate of African descent, the first candidate of Asian descent to receive a party's nomination for president. It's the first time we've had a candidate bow out less than a month before the convention and then an online and telephone canvassing of delegates to change the nominee. Uh, She's the first Democratic candidate from the Western United States. Um, So there's just a lot of unprecedented things going on here that we've never seen before. And then, as you mentioned, the level of celebration we've never seen before, live performances of very high quality from John Mayer, Sheena Easton, and speeches by people like Stevie Wonder and uh, John Legends there. And every state had a different song when it presented its delegates. So I've never seen such a celebratory music-filled party atmosphere at a convention. And it's working. American conventions, they don't actually pick the nominee. The nominee's already picked. The point of the convention is to have the formal nomination present the party platform and build unity in the party. And what we're seeing in the dozens and dozens and dozens of speakers who are speaking is a lot of young Democrats, the next generation of leaders, by the dozens, giving very impressive speeches, nothing like the Republican uh, convention where very few young leaders uh, were speaking. Also, the ratings are very high. 20 million viewers the first night, similar numbers tonight. These are huge numbers for a political meeting on television. And that's helping Kamala Harris raise $400 million this month. So a lot of this is just unprecedented. So what do you make of the Obama's call on voters not to be complacent after having an energetic convention? Obama's sort of saying, you know, don't despair, don't check out. Things can get better if you engage in politics despite all this negative language. And on the opposite side, there's a problem of overconfidence because Kamala Harris is doing so well. She's raising so much money. She's so popular. She's filling stadiums with much larger crowds than Trump now. There's a chance that people just say, because, you know, a lot of Americans don't vote 50 percent of Americans at least don't vote in the elections. And so there's a risk that people will just feel, okay, she's going to win. I don't need to get in line. And also a lot of people need to work on the campaign. There are millions of volunteers that have volunteered since she became the nominee, but that doesn't mean they're actually going to do what they volunteered for. So he's basically saying, or to quote James Carville, uh, who is an advisor to Bill Clinton, when he was talking to a group of Democratic organizers, Russian President Vladimir Putin has appointed Kashenko, a veteran diplomat with more than 40 years of experience as Russia's new ambassador to Kenya. Decision may be the latest sign of Moscow's interest in a place that also hosts the UN's only headquarters in the Southern Hemisphere. Mr. Kashenko is fluent in Kiswahili, one of the official languages of both Kenya and Tanzania, and is widely spoken in the Great Lakes region. He was initially named as the new envoy to Ethiopia and the African Union according to an earlier dispatch published by Russian state media in June. The new dispatch published on Tuesday shows that he will also take on the traditional role of Russia's permanent representative to the UN in Nairobi. Mr. Kachenko represses Dmitry Masinyev, who has held the post since 2018. 
prior to his appointment, Mr. Kachenko was the director of the Russian Foreign Ministry's Africa Department, a position he has held since 2020. A graduate of the Moscow State Institute of International Relations, Mr. Kachenko began his diplomatic career in East Africa in the 1980s with postings in Kampala and Hirari. His appointment comes at a time when Moscow is actively renewing its ties with African countries, but is also being challenged by the West, led by the U.S. In particular, Russia came under fire for invading Ukraine in February 2022, a decision that was heavily criticized by the West and allies such as Kenya at the time. Kenya later tinkered with this stance calling instead for peaceful means to resolve the conflict and supporting the African Union's attempts to mediate the conflict last year. Those attempts, led by South African President Suri Ramaphosa and his Comodian, Comorian counterpart, Azari Asumani, who was chairing the African Union, failed. The appointment of the new envoy coincides with the appointment of Peter Mathuki as Nairobi's new ambassador to Moscow. Dr. Mathuki, a former Secretary General of the East African Community EEC, has come under increasing scrutiny over allegations of corruption during his leadership of the regional bloc. Mathuki was at the center of controversy over the misappropriation of a U.S. dollar 6.6 million peace fund allocation, intimidation, and reassignment of secretariat staff. However, he maintained his innocence and was never actually impeached by the East African Legislative Assembly, despite area threats by MPs to do so. Nevertheless, he became the first East, uh, East African Community Secretary General to be recalled by his government before the end of his five-year term, having been appointed during the 21st Ordinary Summit of EEC Heads of State in March 2021.